Well, hello friends, uh, Jordan here, and today we're going to do a little tutorial on how to install crown molding. Um, I've been in the industry for a long time now, and over the years I've, uh, I've made a few mistakes, and I've learned from them. I've um, picked up a few tricks, and uh, I'm here to share them with you today, and hope that um, this makes your life a little easier. Crown molding can be, a, can be a tricky one. I've seen some pretty terrible hack jobs. Um, but uh, I'm hoping to help you out here and let's make it a little smoother, okay? So, without any further ado, let's do it. Today we're going to show you everything from doing a standard inside corner to an outside corner with an off angle. Uh, we're going to cover how to do a seam when your crown molding is not long enough for your wall and how to do a nice return. First things first, find your measurements. I always measure about three inches down from the ceiling. Reason being, that's where the crown is actually going to sit. Drywall corners can really vary. Uh, once you got your measurement, you know I suggest writing it both on a wall and a piece of paper for your reference. Uh, another little tip: it's always best to round up about half a sixteenth or so, um, because you know once you've cut your piece, you're basically stuck with it. You can after you fit it, you can always trim off a little bit, but if it's too short, you just wasted a piece and wasted some time. Next step is to find your sauce. First off, never assume a 90 degree corner is actually 90 degrees. As seen here, it's actually about one degree shy of a perfect corner. I know it doesn't seem like much, but it's more than enough to really throw off your miter. And you're going to spend all this time tweaking it and bending it and just trying to make it right. And in the end, you're just going to fill it with caulking and it's just not going to look professional. A perfect fit is actually quite easy to find if you have the right tools and know how. All you need is a T-bevel and a saw set carpenter's protractor. Simply place the T-bevel in the corner and transfer it over to your saw set. Then bam, you got yourself the perfect saw setting. Okay, now it's time to start cutting. First things first, set your saw to the correct setting which you found on your saw set. After that, simply place your crown molding where it's supposed to be and make your cut. Take your time, watch your fingers, nobody wants to be called stumpy. Um, another really important thing here is I've got, as you can see there, I've got these, uh, these jigs that hold the crown molding in place up against the fence. Very important to have. If you don't have one, you can't really hold it manually. You're not going to be accurate. So I highly suggest either getting one of these rigs or um, you can make one yourself. With Check YouTube, you'll find something for that. Now before you start gluing up your molding and breaking out the nail gun, it's very important to do a dry fit. Just to make sure that it's not too long, not too short, and you can make adjustments after that. Once you've realized that it fits and everything's okay to go, it's time to start gluing. Uh, it's very important that you glue all ends and all sides of the crown molding itself. The, the inside miters, outside miters, and everywhere where it touches the wall. It's not the nails that really hold the molding, it's more the glue, because once the glue dries, that's where it's going to stick. Something I see all the time, and it, it really uh, gets me going, is when people put their crown molding upside down. A lot of people don't realize that it's the more detailed cove always goes on the bottom when you place it on the wall. Okay, now that you're all glued and ready to go, it's time for the fun part, time to install. Um, so a couple little things to point out, I guess. One of them being, right when you put your, your, your miter together, you might find that there's a gap on the top or the bottom. That doesn't mean the miter's off, it just means the positioning is wrong. All you have to do is just move both pieces of molding at the same time, either up or down, depending on where the gap is. Um, you can figure it out as you go along. Just sort of tweak it, take your time, play with it, and uh, you know, just try and stay relaxed. Don't get anxious. Once you've got your miter just right, pop a couple of nails right into the corner itself, and then sort of work your way along and go from there. So yeah, in a perfect world, you should probably always try to hit your studs. Sometimes you can't find them, sometimes they're not there in the ceiling. Um, just make sure to get the ones in the corners. Get a stud finder and mark them if you can. If not, then you hit your nail on a bit of an angle and the glue is going to do the work in the end, like I said earlier, so don't worry too much if you can't find the studs. And always make sure to get your glue cleaned up while it's still wet. Don't walk away and continue on and let it dry on its own because it is so much more difficult if everything hardens and you have to pick it out with a knife. Now when you're not doing two short pieces, uh, or at least a long piece and a short piece, say if you're doing two long ones. Uh, it's good to build a sample piece like what I'm doing here where I'm just cutting another piece at the exact same angle and I use that to sort of tweak around and dry fit and make sure that I have my the miter or my corners in the right position. Then I'll just nail the rest of the board in and that way my next piece when I put it in it's going to be a perfect fit because I used a sample. So every once in a while you're going to come across a situation like what we have here, where we have a piece of crown molding that just ends. 
doesn't go to inside or outside corners, nothing to butt it, butt it up against. So what you have to do is you have to create a return, as seen here. It's a, it's a nice little piece, looks really good, shows off the profile, and it's quite easy to do. Here's a short, short little clip on how it's done. Okay, now that you've done all these perfect miters and made this beautiful job of installing all your crown molding, you need to finish it by filling all the cracks and holes. This is actually very important. If you, if you mess this up, it doesn't matter how good of a job you did carpentering it, uh, it's going to look terrible. So a couple things to point out, you really want to make sure to ooze your, your caulking, like push it in. Uh, you don't want it just to sit on the surface because it's going to wind up opening up over time if you don't fill in those cracks. Um, make sure to have a wet sponge with you at all times, keep your fingers wet, but not too wet. If you saturate it too much, you're going to find that it's going to sink in after it dries. So um, keep a wet sponge, keep a wet finger, but not too wet. In this video, I'm filling my holes, my nail holes with caulking, which can be done if you do it correctly. If you get it too wet and wipe it down, it's going to sink and look terrible. So you just sort of want to wet your finger a little bit and just sort of spread it and smooth it out. After this, I'm going to show you a little clip on how to deal with seams. Uh, you're going to come across situations where you got 12 feet of crown molding and a 13 foot wall. When this happens, you're going to have to make a seam and you need to do it right. If you don't do it right, it's going to open up and it's going to look terrible. So, watch, learn and enjoy. This video was brought to you by Sawset. Check us out at sawset.ca for more information on this fantastic little tool. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed and learned a little something. Please stay tuned. We'll try to get more videos out for you as soon as possible. Like, subscribe, and comment below. Take care.